Hello everyone, thanks for watching my channel and today's video. Please remember to leave a, a comment at the bottom which helps me improve my videos. Okay, in today's video I'm going to talk about different conditions uh, which can cause bleeding from our food pipe or the esophagus. I have chosen four conditions. Number one condition I've chosen today is esophagitis, then Mallory Weiss tear or Mallory Weiss syndrome, varices and esophageal cancer. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the first two conditions. In the next video, we're uh, going to talk about varices and following video, which will be the last video on the esophagus problems, will be the esophageal cancer. Now, it's important to know that as we, I spoke in my first video in the series, when we were talking about the anatomy, about the digestive system that from the mouth to the bottom end, which is the anus, the digestive system is about 25 to 30 feet long. So, Logically speaking, if the blood comes out from the top end, which is our mouth or the gullet or the stomach, then the blood will come up from the top end, yeah, which is our mouth. If the bleeding is from the bottom end, which is our anus or bottom end of our bowel, then the blood will predominantly come from the bottom end. So the second thing the bleeding depends on is how fast the bleeding is. The bleeding is slow the bleeding is medium or, me or bleeding is very fast. So if the uh, bleeding is very, very slow, the way patient presents is different. The bleeding is medium, then the way we present is a bit different. If the bleeding is very, very fast, then uh, our symptoms or the way the blood will come out is again very different. So just going to briefly touch on that. So for whatever reason, if I'm bleeding from my digestive system, there are three main ways of um, I'm going to present to the hospital or I'm going to go to the hospital with one of these three reasons. Now, the first and foremost, top end is vomiting blood. As I said earlier, that if you are bleeding from the top end of our digestive system, which is the food pipe, which is the esophagus or the stomach, or very upper part of the small intestine, then the blood predominantly will come the top end because there is less uh, gut above the bleeding than it is below the bleeding. But eventually, if the bl blood stays in the bowels for long enough, then we will also get blood in the stools. Now, if the blood is uh, coming out from the top end, which is the gullet and the stomach, because the stomach produces acid, the acid changes the color of the blood into very dark like coffee or almost jet black, like tar. So the bleeding that is coming from the top end of our digestive system, which is the gullet and the stomach, if it comes out of the bottom end in our stools, it will be almost tarry black, jet black. And that jet black, sticky, slimy, very smelly stools is called malina. So I'll write that down. And called malina stools. Now if the blood is coming out of the lower part of our digestive system then it is usually either dark blood like chopped liver color or it's fresh blood depending on how far down it's coming from. Now sometimes the bleeding is very subtle, it's very slow and happens not over uh, hours or days but happens over weeks or months. In that case the patient or uh, in this case, myself, I'm losing blood very, very slowly and I don't see the blood coming up the top end. I don't even see any blood coming out of the bottom end. My stools look normal. I'm not vomiting blood, but I'm constantly losing blood drip by drip by drip from my digestive system. In that case, I will lose my blood count, which means my blood will become thinner. I lose the red cells from my blood and that condition is called anemia, which we will talk about a bit more depth and detail in one of my future videos. But just remember that if the bleeding is very subtle, very slow, then the blood count will go down, which is called anemia. Now, because our blood contains iron, um, so when we lose blood slowly, the iron levels in the blood go down. So we are going to, I'm going to talk about now the first two conditions, which is esophagitis, and the melody wise. 
Okay, the first condition we are talking about today is esophagitis. So, esophagus, stomach, that red thing I have made, these little red spots here and this red line over here, these red spots, is the blood loss. So, what happens in esophagitis, as we discussed in the previous few videos, the commonest cause of esophagitis, which I have uh, marked in red over here, the lower end of the gullet becomes very raw and inflamed. In minor esophagitis, when it's only minor inflammation, uh, then the, there is no significant blood loss. If you're losing blood, the body will make enough blood uh, to replace that blood. However, when the acid keeps coming up, which is the commonest cause of esophagitis, as we spoke in my previous video, acid, these green arrows coming up, burning the gullet, we are not getting treated for it or we're not taking any treatment for it the gullet gets really raw and inflamed. The main symptom patient gets is um, the food gets stuck when it's coming down because it's quite raw and inflamed. It hurts behind the breastbone when the food comes down. They get severe heartburn and we also feel uh, that there is a lump in the back of our chest which we can't clear. And the blood loss with this is usually quite slow. So as I spoke earlier, then one way of presenting the patient because the bleeding is very, very subtle, very slow, is not actually seeing blood in the stools or seeing blood in our mouth. Occasionally, patients can complain when waking up in the morning when they are lying flat. So the bit of blood comes into their mouth in the morning. But since they're losing trickling blood very slowly, their blood becomes thin and they become anemic. Now, how do we diagnose esophagitis? As we spoke in my previous video, the best way of diagnosing esophagitis is putting a camera down on an endoscope. Camera comes down, has a look at it. Sometimes doctors take biopsies to make sure there is nothing serious like cancer or anything in there, or um, Barrett's esophagus, which again, you can watch in my previous video. And uh, the treatment is quite effective in these conditions and antacid tablets what we call proton pump inhibitors, if the patient can take those tablets, are very, very effective. Now, the second condition I'm going to talk about today is Mallory Weiss tear or Mallory Weiss syndrome. This is a very interesting condition. I've never seen this uh, as a life-threatening problem. However, this can bleed quite alarmingly. And the bleeding can be very brisk, can be very fast and very, very quick. So much so that, uh, as you can see, I've drawn lots of red spots over here and lots of red spots on this side as compared to what I drew in esophagitis. And I, instead of one arrow, I put two arrows over here. So the bleeding is far more brisk. And what is Mallory Weiss tear? In the bottom of the gullet here, patient gets a cut in the bottom end of the gullet and top end of the stomach. And how does that happen when the patient or say if I have a hangover or if I'm vomiting because of an upset tummy or uh, women who, are, who have morning sickness, they're heaving, they're vomiting. So any condition that give rise to retching and vomiting time and time and time again, the gullet every time we retch shakes and moves, shakes and moves because so much pressure from below because we are retching. Whenever we have had vomiting, I'm sure we have all experienced, experienced our tummy upset over the years and we are retching trying to throw up. Our tummy hurts because it's putting so much pressure inside. And when this keeps moving, the bottom end of the gullet gets a tear in the lining. This is not a deep tear, it's only a superficial tear. So just the top lining or inside lining of the gullet tears, but it bleeds quite heavily. When it bleeds, patient uh, comes to the hospital with vomiting blood. So most of the blood comes up with vomiting. Some of the blood also goes down, obviously, because it's so close to the stomach. When it comes into the stomach, it goes down to the bottom end and comes at the bottom end as black tarry stools. Now, how is this diagnosed? The diagnosis is with a camera test. And when the camera come down, they can see a tear the camera has to be done very earlier on because this heals within a few days and when it heals it leaves no scar so you can't see it after a few days does it require any treatment vast majority of them vast vast majority of them will settle down on their own 
when the camera is put down, they can see a tear. If it's not bleeding, then it's left alone and nature will take its course and it will stop bleeding on its own. We need to control the vomiting of the patient so patient is not retching all the time. If however is still bleeding, then the camera doctor can inject some stuff into it with a needle through the camera and that will hopefully stop the bleeding. So these are the two conditions I've spoken about. In the next video, I'm going to talk about uh, esophageal varices and the following video, we are going to talk about esophageal cancer. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, then please thumbs up and please subscribe.